Welcome everyone, this is Zanta. Today's video is by a request by a YouTube viewer. Um, he wanted to understand a little bit more about how to control the floor and modifying those points uh, because he may have a situation where there is uh, different degrees of uh, sloping on the floor slab, top and bottom. So here I am in Revit 2023. I started a new Revit project based upon the architectural template file. And I'm just going to use a basic architectural floor. And we'll start with the generic 12 inch. And we'll just make a simple rectangular floor for now. And when you select the floor, you can click Modify Sub Elements right here. It will give you the dash lines and the points that give you the ability to select them and change their value to a positive or a negative number. So if I say 3 and make that point 3, and switch over to 3D view, you can see that I'm just sloping that one point up. Um, also, if you select the floor and go into the properties of the floor, if variable is checked, what that means is that you can slope the top however you want, but the bottom would be flat. However, if you go back into it and uncheck variable, then what happens is the underside is going to try to conform to the sloping of the top. So the default is not it not being checked. So heading back over to level one floor plan, if I select it and modify sub elements again and change this value to say two um, and make say this is negative one and this one has negative six inches. And we go look at this in 3D. You can start to see how much it's affecting and changing. See. You also can work in 3D as well, but if you select it and modify sub elements, you can pick the lines too and change their values as well. Um, so let's say minus, maybe minus one foot and that drops down. Um, if we go even more drastic, then um, it's gonna give you errors uh, depending on the thickness of the floor slab and it may or may not allow you to do that kind of a change. Okay, so you're really, at this point, you're really kind of warping the floor. Um, here's another approach to this method of uh, modifying a floor. A lot of people will create using floors to do a simple sidewalk. And the sidewalk may be um, sloped or curved or, you know, different elevation points. So for now, what we're going to do is a simple floor, uh, a simple long rectangular floor to act as a, as a um, sidewalk. We'll modify the sub elements and now we can make adjustments. So let's make this um, say minus five feet so it drops down. And the warning that it's giving me is the extreme shape that is what's happening. So it's sloping down a lot. See that? Let's go back to here, modify sub elements again, and then we can go ahead and add points with whatever elevation we want, say minus um, three feet. And we'll put one here, and we'll put one here just to see what happens. And if we look in 3D, this is what's going on, see? So we're completely morphing and adjusting that floor um, to meet the way we want it to meet. Okay? And if you shade it, sometimes it's easier to see. It just depends on if you're doing shaded or um, consistent colors. Because consistent colors will help you see the divisions here. Whereas with shaded, you're going to get contrast, and, and sometimes it's a little hard to read and see like this. See? It's a little hard to read. Um, so you may want to switch over to consistent color visual style. Now, if I select it, I can always click Reset Shape, and it will take it back to the default shape that it is, which was a simple rectangle. What if you have to do a lot of divisions and other things like that? Um, I'm going to go into the floor and modify it to make it bigger. Let's pretend that maybe it's a floor for a bathroom or something like that. And we'll put a shaft opening to represent like a floor drain. Okay, so now that that's done, we can select it, modify sub elements, and then we can start to add points, add split lines. So I'm going to add a split line off the midpoint down to here, and then down to here. And so all I'm doing is basically cutting up the concrete so you can pour it in different sections. Let's say this area needs to be sloped to that hole. Um, again, modify the sub-elements. You can add your points. I'm going to add a negative 6 inches. 
and place that point in the center of the, or roughly the center of the hole. Okay. Um, and when you're done, if we go look at it in 3D, we can see that it's sloping the bottom and the top. See that? Um, and again, if you go into the properties and check variable, then it'll be flat at the bottom and it'll be sloped at the top. So you might have a situation where you have to do something like this. You may also adjust this line to say um, up by, I don't know, two inches. And this one by two inches. And if we go look at this in 3D, we can see that we're starting to slope those two edges up. Now, this edge and this edge are, haven't, haven't gone up. So if I modify this to go up two inches, then I'm kind of creating a raised little platform area as well. Okay. So those are the kind of different ways that you can modify the floor uh, with sloping to help you, you know, kind of come up with the design that you want. This is all in the um, project environment. Um, you do have the ability to create a mass floor and kind of manipulate things a little bit um, as well. So I'm going to try this and see um, how restrictive it may or may not be. So I'm going to go and create a new family, uh, English Imperial. Let's see, conceptual mass. And we'll start with the conceptual mass. So in this environment, you can see we've got a level. We have two reference planes. And if you select the level, it becomes the current plane. If you select a reference plane like this, it becomes the current plane to work on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to create a just basically simple rectangular model lines like this. And then if I select it, I can click Create Form, and it will give me you know, what looks like a floor slab if we modify the thickness of it however we want. If we tab into it to select everything, we can click uh, X-Ray so we can see through everything. And then we can even click, say, Add an Edge and put the... Um, uh, you have to zoom in a little bit. But I can put in uh, vertical edges from one plane to another plane like this if I want to. Uh, and let's say I just do a few of these like this. Um, and the reason you may want to do this is because if that's the case, you can select the point and you can modify the points by just pulling and dragging on the points like this. And it will start to basically adjust the shape of the form. So if I even if I select the line and pull the line, it will adjust the shape of the line as well. See? Um, also, if you tab into Select Everything, you can click Add uh, a Profile, and it will add another profile uh, in between. And depending on um, how much manipulation you've done, you may or may not be able to do that. So this, I think it can't do it because it's so thin. So let's see if I can't um, try another thing. Let's tab Select Everything, turn off the X-ray. We'll select, yeah, if I select just that floor slab edge, it's going to pull just that slab edge. If I pull this one, it's going to pull just this one. So let's see if I can modify it enough to make it thick enough for me to add profiles. I, I don't think so. I think I've uh, manipulated it too much, but we'll see. So we'll tap into everything again, x-ray it, add a profile, and no, I think it has to do with how I've modified all of this. Okay. Um, in any event, you have the ability, let's switch over and do another one over here, uh, a simple rectangle over here, and we'll do a create form, we'll make it bigger, and we'll tab everything, and then we'll x-ray it, and now if I add a profile, I can add as many profiles as I want. Um, it doesn't stay in the add profile command, you have to do it individually, but if you do it this way, then at least you have multiple profiles, and then as you are uh, tab selecting everything and adding uh, edges, you can, you'll, you're going to end up getting a whole bunch of um, intersecting points that allow you to manipulate those points or those edges by pushing and pulling. You see? Um, so it, depend, it just it really, at the end of the day, it depends on what kind of manipulation you're trying to achieve uh, will dictate kind of how you need to build the shape. Um, this is very, very iterative, and at the end of the day, it's a mass object and you would load it into your project as a mass object. And most people will build a building uh, based upon a mass object. So, um, so in this case, this is 
our experiment on how to create a floor and manipulating the floor using mass objects. Hopefully this video will give you enough explanation as to how to kind of control and manipulate a floor should you need to use it in that manner. Okay? Thank you very much for watching.